Hey, kia ora whanau. How's it going? Hey, welcome back to Kaitaki Marakai. And here's an update on our mara at the Papa Kainga. Um, my sister-in-laws um, have been picking it up and working with it to suit their own space and their own way of doing things. But I just wanted to give you a bit of a bit of an update because man, it's looking really good. Here's Papa's orchard. It's got his fruit trees in here, so we're just working around getting all that tidied up. Um, here's where we started out last year and now we've got these nice soil clumps um, we've had a bit of runoff with all this rain that came this year that's why we haven't really done much out here it's just too hard to get in but the rain's been coming down and really soaked along here so they've been lifting them up um, <clears throat> first season of asparagus was in here and it came through um, this year, so we're just um, letting that um, mature away. Here's Nana's um, rhubarb. This is the heirloom one. Yeah, so that's growing really well. Raised um, beds. This looks like spinach. Some of the strawberries we had over there. More spinach, mint, that used to be over here. Um, this is where the kumara was along this stretch here. Um, strawberries are starting to come through. <coughs> Back here, that's what these are. <coughs> yeah. Um, yes, yeah, looking good. What we've been talking with the farm though, has been on a bit of a plan is and this is where we're going to come and plant our potatoes <clears throat> one lot of our potato plants is they're going to put the bed up and we're going to replant it here because we've actually, we've actually got some really nice soil in here um, so potatoes in two weeks time so you have a little bit look at that so we're going to put all our root crops particularly like potatoes kumara piru piru over this side and i'll show you where they're going to put all their leafy stuff brassicas um, Planning to get chickens, put a coop in here under the shade. Got some composting bins and a composting pile over here. Ooh, right in the midst of the um, nectarine, there's a kawa kawa. See that one there? That's a kawa kawa. Rungoa Māori, that one there. <coughs> you can use that. It'll wrap around you, you can boil it, boil it up. Soak in it. Lots of lots of ways. Some more fruit trees around the side here. This one here. Another cold pole. Um yeah. So we're we're planning to think about um, uh, looking at putting up a permaculture around here in relationship to swales. So we're thinking of a swale. Uh, along there, maybe a couple of them because we're now getting a lot of water running down this way and so I'm thinking about a food forest along the mounds of the swales and then it runs through there so we might end up putting two swales in <clears throat> and then put a food forest in, 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 in there um, so we're just thinking what that could look like and that's not my own idea it's Jeff Lawton um, over in Australia does a lot around permaculture and swales and the usage of it and then slowly the water comes down capturing comes down in effect this is kind of like you know capturing the water down to the orchard but yeah girls doing really well and um, now <clears throat> here's an example of what happens when you leave the soil exposed um, now we've had a lot of rain uh, they've transferred what we grew in here onto into our raised beds that they've made of those half barrels. Uh, but when your soil is exposed like this, no protection on it. See how it's compacted? See, this is that's gone very hard. So even though we've got produce growing in it, the importance of um, having a cover crop or a cover over it 
like you see a little bit over there there's a bit of covering over there um, when the rain and we've had a lot of rain this year through Northland um, it uh, it impacts onto the soil and basically what we had toiled up and was all nice and loose it gets compacted um, and then all the nutrients actually just run off down the hill so whereas if I, if I come over here in this water because there's vegetation in it I can see how it's all nice and yeah look at that it's all loose it's all loose in there look at that see that that's the difference so sometimes if you're not going to use a mutter is to put a cover crop in to hold it in place and what the cover crop will do uh, like lupins is we'll, we'll put the um, nitrogen um, and carbon back into the soil so even though this one looks looks funny but this one's actually really good um, but you know, he's, we'll fix that. He's, he's to fix. And same over, same over here. Got a bit of compaction going on. But those are all lessons for us and good examples. Anyway, this is this side and the orchard. We talked about getting this tidied up, slowly working on it, be able to get back access to our fruit trees, and then think about other fruit trees we want to put in here. Um, particularly ut utilising the, the canopy that's here to give big give protection for our baby ones. All right, I'm going to go around the other side and show you what's going on over there. Well, here we go. Here's an example of what they've been doing. So they're putting in some little raised beds around the fuddy. But I just want to quickly show you what I've also done in regards to easy access crops. And here we go here, planting out using the decking. Now you anyway, I'm going to do this. Look at that. Celery, spinach, more celery, rhubarb. So they're utilising deck space to grow their vegetables. Awesome. And here's a bigger shelf of the raised beds. Yeah, well, here's the other side. Um, so we've got... Um, um, plants growing on the deck but the other side here is they're putting in some raised beds to get closer access to the fuddy and so they'll do all their greens and they're going to take some of these wood here, wood here to redo the uh, beds on the other side um, yeah so some raised beds so we're going to plant in things like lettuces some of your broccoli cabbages um, and these beds here. <clears throat> now we've we had a little whānau hui today and it's really cool what the whānau are doing here. Um, they've captured the, the, the need for growing their own vegetables and so we just we're, we're thinking about a world of possibilities and what it could look like um, having this site as a water site of Fauna and flora, food forests, gardens, raised beds, food production, um, seed germination, all that type of stuff. It's going to take us a little bit of time to do it, but we've now got wider whānau members thinking about it. Um, as you can see, we're on the side of a hill, <clears throat> and um, I don't know how many times a year I've mowed this, um, this lawn over the years, but they're, gonna, they're repurposing it. To grow food. Um, here we are on tank water so the thing that's going to be a big big concern for us is uh, water and so we have to be creative about that like capture water off our, off our sleep out um, and other fixtures 
uh, we have to be really creative about how we're going to do that for winter uh, for the summertime that's coming particularly these beds here because they get the sun all the time and it's it's running downhill so the water will naturally run down um, unless we create uh, like swales that that slowly release the water and um, if you don't know what a swale is uh, look at permaculture and Jeff Lawton look up him um, the back end of the walkway or the, the, the swale bit because like it kind of goes in fact if you look at look at that that tube if you think of this tube here sitting a bit and you create this down up and around well that tube there this is the bottom of the swale so the water will come down this way and water will capture along that swale as long as that mound is going and it's all leveled out the water will be leveled out and capture it and then uh, slowly the water will seep its way through the mound and in the mound you, you create your little food forest you put in your um, your fruit trees and other eatable things um, fruit and vegetables and rungo and maori things like that and so on the on the mound which would be here um, you would grow you would grow um, your vegetation on on that part of it and then the water sleeps through now one way to deal with it on this side is you could actually put a swale create a swale across here because there's naturally water coming down here it builds up and it re slowly releases the water um, down because it'll release it further down seven meters and this lot will capture it um, the other thing is they're going to need to cover it um, either with a uh, mulching because uh, this will dry up uh, and if they're not careful um, they'll lose all their nutrients but this is what they're up to this is really awesome you know um, that ability to be able to create an environments where you can eat, eat, eat and source your own food without being reliant on other other organizations or other people um, I'm going to tighten up a bit around here cleaned up so you know I'm looking at this space here and how can we turn this into a, into a food production mother you know what, what could grow in here so we were talking today about thinking of um, if we're going to have whānau living here how do we let that type of fixture fit into the environment rather than just plonking everywhere so that the, the land is speaking more than our structures or our buildings that we have um, yeah the papakainga or JC. For those overseas that watch this, a papakainga would be it's an indigenous um, homeland. Um, papakainga literally means papa, like whenua land, kainga um, is home. <coughs> So it's the homeland features. They're not kind of like, they're not reservations where, say if in the States, where the government set aside plots where people could leave. Uh, this is a site that was returned um, following a lease agreement coming up. And um, the farmer returned, got the land back. And so this is their ancestral land. And what we're doing on it is trying to create sustainability for the whānau. So here's another example from the other end. So this pile here was off the road. Um, you would have seen one early in the year, how terrible it was. Anyway, we haven't finished with it. It's just time. Uh, we need to put some new seal down. <clears throat> but again, it's um, finding a way of making this level and create a swale so when the water flows this way it gets captured in the dip and then soaks through the mound and in the mound we start planting out vegetation uh, for it 
so we're just just working on what they could look like so we have water runoff capture it capture it and then hopefully feed so that's going to be an interesting one to think about putting our swales along here um, to catch the runoff that then feeds we create a feed food forest along this bit hmm interesting all right anyways that's a big that's a bit of an update um you know manuka this is flaring so if we had our bees here oh man they'd be munching out like crazy um, okay bless your whanau um this is um rewai te kahu kaitake marakai beka gardens and this is the mara that we're dealing with on our papakahinga my sister-in-laws have picked it up now and we're just supporting each other in that. Pretty stoked really with them. So homeland. <laughs>